Hey everybody, welcome to System Test 29. So, as requested by Aaron Productions a very long time ago, uh, at long last, this system test will be Spectral Alert Advances. So as you can see, i got my System Sensor P2R up here on the NAC1 spot. And uh, this device is set to code 3, and i got a couple other devices, of course, on the system. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Over on the NAC2 spot, we have another System Sensor Spectral Alert Advanced device. This one is the remote horn version, uh, the HW. Um, like I mentioned, the remote horn version, this one is in white and does not have any fire lettering. So I guess, in theory, this could also be used as a general signaling device, but in this case, this one is listed for fire alarm service. So for the pulse stations today, I decided to go with something a little bit different than what might be expected with the spectral alerts. Uh, as most of you probably know, almost anywhere where you see spectral alert advances installed, there will be some sort of Honeywell branded, either Firelight, Notifier, or uh, on occasion Silent Night, even though they like to use Gentex signals more. Uh, anyways, there will usually be a Honeywell branded BG12 um, installed in the same installation. For today, since I just had the BG12s up in the last system test with the exceeders, I decided to go ahead and use these two Notifier pull stations. Um, the model number on both of these is BNG-1. The um, model over on the left side of the board is the older version, although not the oldest. Um, this one is from around the 1970s uh, and is incredibly hard to pull. You'll see later on when we go to activate it. And then over on the right side of the board, finally got my left and rights sorted out, um, we have a BNG1-R. Uh, this is the more modern version of the notifier BNG1. Uh, this one was made right around 2011, so it's relatively new. So, although de the designs on these are almost identical, um, there is nearly a 40-year age difference between these two models, and when you go to activate them, it really shows. So, uh, I guess there's no better way to demonstrate that than going ahead and trying them out. So we're going to go ahead and start off this test with the newer of the two notifier pull stations, the BNG-1R. As you were able to see, uh, the BG-1R is a really easy pull station to activate. It just has a little spring that retains the uh, back of the cam on the lock. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this older version of the BNG-1 is much more difficult to activate. And you're going to see that when I go ahead and uh, at least try to pull this. I think I've only pulled this one other time. Uh, so here goes. So now we can go ahead and reset both of these stations. And one of the labels actually fell out of the uh, BNG-1R when I activated it, so stick that guy back in there. It's the uh, City of New York 
Board of Standards and Appeals uh, approval sticker. Now we're going to go ahead and reset the panel. So I'm actually going to go ahead and break tradition a little bit here and use the sensor reset key switch in order to reset the DMP XR500 system. And the alarm just cleared and now everything is back to normal. So that wraps it up for the system test content that I had planned for today. Uh, but since I still have a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate something else that's on this system, even though it's not really fire alarm related. So really all that you guys see of the DMP system is just reporting the uh, fire alarm zones. Um, but as you know, I do have that motion detector installed in the system as well as the uh, box of radionics poppet modules. So uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the entry delay uh, function on this keypad using the motion sensor. So what I'm going to do is just leave the camera pointed right here at the keypad. I'm going to arm it, let the exit delay countdown um, go through the 45 seconds I think it is. And then I'm going to walk back in and you'll be able to see it go through the sequence of the entry delay. And then I'm actually not going to type in the code so it will go into an alarm condition. So we're going to go ahead and arm the system, click arm, um, I'm going to pick no for right now, uh, no, arm, what was the entrance zone, this uh, zone so they don't have it connected is always in fault so I'm just going to go ahead and bypass that, actually it bypassed automatically, and now I got to get out of here. So I'm going to walk back in the room, the motion detector should pick me up. So now you hear the one keypad is still an alarm, and now this keypad is giving me a chance to sign back in again. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the code. And disarm all, yes, even though I only armed that one area. And you see all system off. So that's just a little bit of how the uh, functionality, the entrance delay works. 
Uh, if you're curious about the area assignments, uh, those are still existing from where this place was removed from. Haven't cleared those out yet, so you saw one of them was for an engineering area. That was the general space, all the doors and stuff within there. And then the uh, entry delay exit area was on the entrance, the uh, 300 address entrance into that facility. So uh, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.